is a perfect match for all you motorcycle nuts out there. Or if you just like to play with fire. Downsides? You can't get piercings done on the 9F. That knocks it down one star for sure. Final verdict? Four out of five. That's it from me, Night City. And remember, keep on chipping in. Tiancha, come quad for the soul. City. Today I've got a special show for the media heads and the dedicated voyeur, the Dynalar TX43 OptiZoom. Now I've had my eye on these sweet optics for a while, cause Dynalar's last model went way above my expectations. But will it do the same this time? Here's the scoop. The TX43 gives you 15 times higher magnification with just a tiny dip in resolution. Really useful for anyone looking to buy the premium version, which comes with a built-in brain dance implant. But probably the most important thing about the TX43 is that it doesn't have any neural side effects. This time round, the dizziness and migraines only occur when you're in motion. It's also worth mentioning that the TX43 OptiZoom's got 20 different iris patterns with dope names like Zombie, Jaguar, Chameleon, and my favorite, Snow Globe. Downsides? Dynalar's policy means you'll have to give them access to any pics taken with the OptiZoom for marketing or research purposes. But that's just standard procedure. Here's my verdict. The TX43's got excellent quality to price value. So this is a solid five out of five. Tune in next time and keep on chipping in. citizen who well Martin how would you describe your situation well as you can see I uh, I lost my arms a real tragedy Martin was it an accident were you attacked by nomads no nothing like that uh, okay so I uh, back in 56 I was working at New American Auto Work the NAA short go on well the company hit a few snags decided to start cutting costs. One day they call us all into the break room, tell us we're inefficient, slow, weak, what have you. So they give us a choice. Either we replace our arms with Zeta Tech cyberware, or we get terminated. No severance packing. And what did you do? What anyone in my place would have done. I had two girls, a, a wife who couldn't work. I didn't have a choice. And it's not like it was free. They forced us to buy them on credit. 20-year installments, 
fixed to our salaries. Everything was fine at first. The arms were all right. But then a year later, NAA went under. I was out on the street. Applied anywhere I could for a job. Walked into every factory. I would have worked for any. But there was nothing. Nada. Zilch. I started falling back on my payments. A month goes by, then second, then third month. Then Zeta Tech sends its repo squad. I was on my knees, begging for another month, even a week. But they didn't listen. They tased me, ripped out my arms, and just left me there. My daughters, they, they. I can tell you're still hurting. Even got some tears there. How about drying them with Militech's brand new Drop Nerd 5X? What? No. No, no. This isn't happening. Oh, but it is. Ziggy Q's is where it's always happening. I can't believe it. Ziggy, I... Oh, my God. <laughs> Got a story you want to share with the world? A tragic accident? Family drama? Don't wait! Call 1-900-ZIGGY-Q!
Why is that, you might ask? Well, it just so happens your girl just got a prototype of more technology's latest butte. The Housestock W4 arms were originally designed for the military, but they've just been approved for general circulation. I had to wait for some nasty scars to heal before I fired these up for the first time, but when I did, we'll see for yourself. Here we go. Accept, accept, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's ready. You guys recording? Sweet. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Holy shit! Did you get that? <laughs> now, I could go over all the fine-grained deets and specs, but I'm guessing that little demo spoke for itself. One thing I will say, though, for an extra premium, Moore will throw in some red hot incendiary and stun modules for the House Stock W. All this just shows that Moore Technologies House Stock W implants are an excellent choice for security personnel, mercs, and of course, any ordinary night citizen struggling to get their pickled scop jars open. <laughs> and now the moment you've all been waiting for. That's right, a five out of five. See you next time and keep on chipping in. Welcome to Safe and Sound. My name is Sergeant Dobbs, and today I'll tell you how to survive a cyber psycho attack. While out shopping, our friend, Mr. Puggins, suddenly hears screams and gunfire. His first instinct is to run for the nearest exit, but that would be a very bad idea. Your average cyber <laughs> Which means I'll be very no sure thing. So, how can Mr. Puggins stay safe? He should quickly search the area for the nearest ADU, or Automated Defense Unit, and find shelter as close as he can. All ADUs are clearly marked, so you can't miss them. The ADU will activate when the first shots are fired. Its job is to protect civilians and impossible to neutralize the crazed attacker. Mr. Puggins should stay in cover while the ADU is active. If he's not careful, he could be the victim of the Mr. Puggins might also be tempted to call the police, but that's both unnecessary and unwise. The ADU has already notified the authorities of the attack. But more importantly, many cyber psychos have auditory implants, which means they can hear you even when you whisper. When the police finally arrive at the scene, Mr. Puggins should not speak to them unless spoken to, and should not make any sudden movements. NCPD officers are trained to respond to any unexpected sounds and activity in high-risk situations by using live ammunition. As with the police, if trauma team medics arrive at the scene, Mr. Puggins should not speak to them or approach them. They are only there to extract trauma team policy holders. Similarly, corporate security will only defend their own employees. All others at the scene will be treated as potential obstacles to ensuring client safety. Once the police eliminate the cyber psycho threat, leave the area as soon as possible. But remember, if the attack occurred in a store or shopping mall, you're likely entitled to a discount or voucher. Don't forget to claim yours. That's all for this episode of Safe and Sound. Stay alive out there.
joining us tonight is a doctor specializing in psychiatry and cybernetics. Spoiler alert, he's a smart guy. Please welcome Ivan Guerrero. I'm truly flattered, Mr. Q. Greetings to all in Night City. Am I right in saying you're a cyberpsychosis therapist? That's correct. So how are things in the Mac stack? <laughs> Good one, Mr. Q. I actually work in the Oak Ridge Hospital. Well, you sure are a funny guy, Ivan. Let's go back to basics, shall we? Just what is cyberpsychosis? Uh, it's a spectrum of psychological disorders caused by cybernetic implantation. But look, I've got seven implants myself, and I haven't completely lost my mind, though my ex-wife would probably disagree. Everyone has their own breaking point. Some patients get symptoms after their first implant. Others remain in perfect psychological health even after what we call a full body conver- Fascinating. So tell us, Doc, what causes cyberpsychosis? Well, it depends on a lot of things, but the most vulnerable are undoubtedly those who display antisocial tendencies. What if implants aren't the real problem? I mean, sooner or later, wouldn't those kinds of people snap by themselves? Interesting question, Mr. Q. In all fairness, there are prominent voices in the scientific community who claim we're confusing correlation with cause and effect. Some go even further and say that cyberpsychotic attacks are a manifestation of societal degradation, like mass shootings once a week. Only difference now is that people don't just have a gun. They've got implants to murder others. And what's your personal opinion, Ivan? I'd start by saying that there's an indisputable connection between cybernetification and psychological disorders. We've seen this with rats. When we replace one-third of their body with cybernetic equivalents, they become five times more likely to display psychotic tendencies than the control. Sheesh! Well, I just hope I don't meet any of those cyber rats on the subway. <laughs> but, and I can't stress this enough, Disorders are a product of one's cultural surroundings. They don't necessarily lead to violence. Well, now, wait a sec. You're saying that cyberpsychos are violent because... Because our society is obsessed with violence. You could even say we glorify it. Fascinating. Now, Ivan, let's say I've got a few implants and I'm worried I'm starting to feel some symptoms. What should I do? Well, the good news is that a treatment exists, and so far it's effective. We call it brain dance neuro reintegration. Over a few dozen sessions, we subject a patient's cortical nodes to intense stimuli, recovering positive attributes like obedience, docility, sociability. Just say it, Doc. You're giving them shock fit. I, I beg your pardon? That's not what I said. You're putting words in my. Is that so? Well, our next guest, Joyce Wright, wants to give you a piece of her mind <laughs> about this so-called therapy. We're about to get mental, folks, right after this short break. Yo, 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 my tubers, shroomers, and fumers. Mr. Whitey here. Drop that milk toast kibble and rush to the nearest door for a taste of sweet, 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 clean speed. Cause life is too short to be slow. In a 
city tingling with desire. Watson Horror. New episodes every Wednesday at 10. Only on WNS. Don't make trouble. Be trouble. But there's smoke. This fire is... You hear Pacifica call and you make sweet love to it, that is. Got something for me? Well, it's like I said. Whatever you're peddling, the VTBS are just not in the market. But they have another task that needs doing, so I volunteered you. Do it well, and you'll get your audience with Brigitte. Most importantly, never leave home without a weapon. You never know when it might get you out of a tight spot. And before stepping paw outside the apartment, check the NCPD bulletin to see if any shootings have been reported and where. But no matter what the reports say, always steer clear of Pacifica and the North Side Industrial District. Okay, so who do I talk to and how? Hit the chapel on Sloan. Look for the altar inside. Someone will touch you, not something spooky. Got it, thanks. He's decided it's safe to walk there. But it's not long before he realizes his dumb mistake. Unless absolutely necessary, you should never walk around Night City. Instead, use the Encart Metro or private services such as Combat Cab. Oh boy. Things take another rough turn for Mr. Buggins. It looks like Watson's been temporarily closed off by corporate security forces. But he's in a hurry to meet his friend, so he decides to leap over the barrier. Another mistake. open fire on any Instead, Mr. Puggins should call his friend and agree on a new spot to meet. When choosing a new place, Mr. Puggins must make sure to suggest a location that is a known meeting place for gangs or other bad guys. At last, Mr. Puggins has reached his friend, Mr. Pugberg. Nice work, fellas. I sure hope they remember my advice on the way home. That's all for this episode of Safe and Sound. Stay alive out there.